Oi there. A few times a week, I receive emails from you lovely people, you know, asking how's it going, what game I'm playing, maybe you have a recommendation for me, how's my third cousin Billy Bob, which by the way, I have to say I love hearing from you, so please, if you have ever a question or just want to say hi, send me an email, I really do love hearing from you. One of the most recent emails I received was from a young man who wishes to remain anonymous, and I read his question and I thought, ah, you know, I can answer this in one to two sentences, but by the time I had gotten halfway through, I realized I was essentially like telling my life story and it was quickly approaching the too long didn't read status and I figured it would come across a lot better in a video and I haven't made a video in a long time so hey his question is have you ever felt embarrassed or ashamed to admit you like or enjoy a specific video game or franchise because he himself was feeling peer pressure to say you know he liked all of these games his internet buddies did but the truth was he didn't enjoy those games at all he enjoyed the casual games you'll find on Facebook or you know apps whatever and my answer to that question is yes and holy hell I can totally relate to that so I will tell you guys my personal experience and if you have anything you'd like to share too, please post it in the comments. Okay, so I first started community blogging on IGN in 2009. Now in no way, shape, or form was I ever affiliated or even worked for IGN. The blog community was pretty much for anyone with a keyboard and an opinion. So I created a profile, which is where the Brit5091 handle some of you might remember came into play. I uploaded a photo of my 21 year old self and uh, whipped up my first blog. The title? Just a gaming chick venting. Yeah. Now the IGN blogging community was very welcoming and wasn't like what you see in most comment threads today. But still, I felt this obligation to present myself as a bloodthirsty, FPS loving, hardcore gamer. Which you know is true. I was and still am all of those things. But that didn't mean I wasn't absolutely obsessed with casual games such as Harvest Moon. In fact, Harvest Moon is one of my favorite video game series of ever. So it was about that time when female personalities such as Jessica Chobot were really blowing up and when it was still new and exciting to see a female in the industry. And seeing how I was still new to this whole internet thing, I stalked the hell out of Jessica's social profiles, her blog, etc. Because I'm thinking, well hey, this girl is just like me and she's doing what I would love to do. And again, at this time, I really didn't know what an internet troll was or what comment bashing was or the kind of uh, poison you can find in a comment thread. So while I'm all excited about Jessica, I was reading these comments where people were just saying some pretty damn surprising things. For example, if the men weren't calling her a fake gamer girl, the women were calling her an attention whore. And riddled within those comment threads were a lot of uh, assumptions. I bet she only plays Pac-Man or she probably only plays, uh, I don't really know what. Happy Happy Pony Town. All of these statements are untrue, but nonetheless, it made me think, oh holy crap, if I don't push it in everyone's face that I love guts and blood and violence and all these intense shooters and everything, that's how they're gonna talk about me. And honestly, I hate confrontation, I hate rude people, I just hate everything that comes with that. So, guess what I did? I tried to push it in everyone's face that I loved all of these Roll, you know, boom, boom, bang, bang, like shoot 'em up, guts everywhere, orgy, those sort of games. And when people would ask me what my favorite games were, it was always Zelda, that new Uncharted game, Dead Space, but never would I mention Harvest Moon. This can be evidenced in a blog post I wrote in 2009 called My Gaming Guilty Pleasure. I make sure to point out that I love hardcore titles such as FPS's and whatnot, and I go on to admit that I shut the blinds when I play games like Harvest Moon. So while I was telling everyone that I enjoyed Harvest Moon, I did it in a cool kid fashion. You know, like, yeah, I like all these hardcore games, but uh, you know, when I play this game, I close the blinds. It's my uh, gaming guilty pleasure. When in reality, I was spending two to three hours a day playing Harvest Moon with the blinds wide open. You, you see what I'm saying here? I felt the need to hide that from the internet. And I can't leave out that this was the first time in my life I was really embracing my passion for video games. I mean, sure, I, I'd always played them my whole entire life, but never had I been so public about it, never had I blogged about it, or tweeted about it, or made videos about it. I mean, we all want to fit in, right? As humans, we crave that sense of belonging and acceptance especially when you have anxiety over confrontation like I do. So years passed and I continued blogging and tweeting and making videos about my love for video games. And as cliche as it sounds, something I learned as the years went on was 
you know, this is my life. And if I really want BlondeNerd.com and BlondeNerd in general to become a brand, I have to be myself. Because that's what people want, right? They want someone genuine. They want someone that they can just like see for the first time IRL who they've been following on social networks for years and just be like, hey, I know you, you know? And I didn't want my brand to be work. I didn't want it to be an act I had to put on every day. So, you know, again, as the years went on, I just learned to stop caring what other people thought because what I learned was people were accepting me for me and they enjoyed me for who I was. And the games I played didn't matter. And the people that would judge me on the games that I did play, I didn't want to have anything to do with them anyway. So why pretend to be someone I'm not for these people who I don't want to be associated with? And again, this mindset did not develop overnight. It required many years. It required a lot of trial and error. It sacrificed a lot of friendships, you know, it required a lot of maturity, which is something I usually don't have, but I'm happy to say I am there. <laughs> so to backtrack to the original question, while it sounds like something lighthearted and chill, it runs a lot deeper than that because ultimately by pretending you like certain games, pretending like you don't like certain games, you're denying something that you love, something you enjoy talking about, something you enjoy participating in. And that's not how you should live your life. Because damn it, you're cool and you should love what you love, man. Ow. Anyway, that's just some food for thought. Feel free to eat it, chew it, digest it, then eat it all over again. And I know to some of you this might be a pointless video, but you know, there are a lot of people out there who are feeling the pressure of the internet and the pressure to fit in and all of that good stuff that comes with the, the internet. So if you are one of those people and you have any questions, whatever, please feel free to shoot me an email, brit at blonder.com, and I will gladly get in touch, because I have been there. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this uh, more serious than normal video of mine, and I will see you next week. <laughs> okay, that is not a good look for me.